Good Friday morning. Let's talk about good relationships. Jesus set the supreme example of love by giving up his life for us. Then Paul writes here in Ephesians, be imitators of God as dearly beloved children and live a life of love just as Christ loved us. So, let's see what this life of love looks like. Ephesians chapter 4. Therefore, having put away falsehood, let each one of you speak the truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger and give no opportunity to the devil. Let the thief no longer steal, but rather let him labor, doing honest work with his own hands so that he may have something to share with anyone in need. Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths, but only such as is good for building up, as fits the occasion, that it may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you, along with all malice. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ forgave you. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children, and walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. But sexual immorality and all impurity or covetousness must not even be named among you as is proper among saints. Let there be no filthiness, nor foolish talk, nor crude joking, which are out of place, but instead let there be thanksgiving. For you may be sure of this, that everyone who is sexually immoral or impure, or who is covetous, that is, an idolater, has no inheritance in the kingdom of God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not become partners with them. Now earlier in this chapter, Paul reminded the Ephesians how they came to know Christ and, and how knowing him, they were taught to be made new in their attitude, in their minds, and to put on a new self created to be like God. Paul gives us some practical examples of how to be like God. I'm going to call them six keys to good relationships. First, be authentic. Live a life of honesty and integrity. Authenticity will free you up to admit that you're far from perfect. You can be vulnerable with others, and that's going to lead you away from hypocrisy. Be passionate without being vengeful. This angry and sin not thing, it's easier said than done. Anger, it's not intrinsically sinful, but it often leads there. In anger, the devil can gain a foothold in your life and that can easily become an addiction. Hi, I'm Pat. I'm a believer in Jesus Christ who has an anger management problem. Work hard and be gracious. Being like God does not mean you must isolate yourself from those that are unholy. Work colleagues, for example. Paul sees work as part of a holy life. Work in itself, it's good for the satisfaction it brings, but it's also hard. There's struggle, there's toil, there's effort. So why do people go in the work in the morning? Well, I gotta pay my bills, gotta make ends meet. How about going to work so you can be holy? I love that Paul finds it necessary to say, do not steal any longer, which hints that this church in Ephesus, they had a celebrate recovery group. The church clearly welcomed, but rehabilitated addicts and alcoholics. In case you didn't know, most thieves are stealing to feed their habit. Rather than taking from others, they should now contribute to the people around them. And the best way to do that is by working. Work in itself is doing something useful and it enables them to share with people in need. Work is for everyone a part of being holy, being like God. You wanna be like God? Encourage others. Your words matter. What you say can either build people up or drag them down. So use your mouth for good and be gracious. This is good advice for you. Great advice for the church. The church needs to be a community that rids itself of bitterness and anger and slander. 
and that welcomes ex-offenders and those struggling with lifestyle issues, those who are divorced, those whose lives are messed up. It's a community of people in need of forgiveness, a place where forgiveness flows freely because forgiven people forgive. I've often said that churches are not trophy cases for perfect people. They're hospitals where wounded people can find healing. And finally, be pure. Chapter 5 does not water down discipleship. Yes, the church welcomes everyone because we're kind, compassionate, and gracious, like God. At the same time, we are called to live a life of purity without even a hint of sexual immorality or any kind of impurity. <clears throat> Why? Because these are improper for God's holy people. While God certainly forgives sin when he's asked, Willful disobedience that's practiced is not asking for forgiveness. It's flagrant disregard for purity. So it's not forgiven. Healthy relationships can be yours if you'll be authentic, passionate, hardworking, and encouraging, gracious, and pure. Sound hard? It is. If healthy was easy, everybody would be. Lord, help me today to put in an effort to be healthy, not only physically, but relationally as well. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow.